Welcome to the next episode of the Dark Web Deacon. Before we begin, be sure to smash that subscribe button, click the bell to turn on notifications, and check out the latest items in the Dark Web Deacon merch store. There is a link in the video description below, and become a true Dark Web enthusiast. New videos are published every Monday and Thursday. Even after 40 years of working to mitigate fileless malware attacks, the software industry is still struggling to eliminate them. So what is fileless malware? Well, fileless malware hijacks legitimate programs via stealth attacks that evade detection by most security solutions, often via a buffer overflow vulnerability. A buffer overflow on a computer, for those who don't know, is analogous to trying to put two weeks worth of clothes for a vacation in a carry-on bag. Well, what happens? The bag explodes and becomes useless and your clothes are exposed. But for overflows on computers are like that, basically trying to put too many instructions or too much information in a very fixed piece of memory. Because it doesn't rely on files and leaves no footprint, fileless malware is challenging to identify and frustrates the most adept forensic analysis. A fileless attack uses a carefully crafted string of instructions known as a payload. This payload can be delivered to the attack host in many ways such as an input field exposed on a website, a link, an in-packet transmitted over communication protocols, such as HTTP, which is what all basically the internet runs on for all your browsers, and then underlying protocols that make up the internet for those who aren't as tech savvy, things like TCP IP and DNS and RDP. The payload then exploits a vulnerability in a running process on the target system by hijacking the control flow of a running application by exploiting, as I mentioned before, usually some type of buffer overflow vulnerability. Fireless malware is responsible for numerous zero-day attacks. Despite the attention that web attacks get in the media, fireless malware remains the most dangerous cyber threat today, since so few people understand it and it's so hard to prevent. After a device is hijacked, the attacker's objective is to quickly launch a terminal shell. Once the subverted process launches the terminal shell under the privilege level of the victim application, usually administrator privileges, the attacker can use all the commands available in the system to do as he or she pleases. The attack is effective because it runs covertly in memory under the process of a legitimate application without needing to create or modify any files on the file system. If the system is rebooted, all traces of the attack disappear. Fileless malware evades nearly all traditional security solutions, making it very effective in hacking other systems. Despite all these layers of protection such as firewalls, content filtering proxies, intrusion detection, advanced threat detection, and even malware detection, Fileless cyber attacks remain rampant. Why is this? Well, as long as traffic is allowed in and out of the network, it's a weak point that hackers can leverage to deliver their payload. Whether it's an email with a link or an attachment, a web service that inputs fields that users can submit data against, or some type of SSH daemon or shell enabling users to remotely connect to a server, the possibilities are always there. There is very little protection on the target system, which is the consumer or employee, other than antivirus solution running on their operating system. Hopefully you found this video informative on what is fileless malware. As I mentioned, really the crux of this argument is no matter how advanced your endpoint security is, if you're trying to run a business or you're just someone who's trying to get on the internet, you need some type of email or, or messaging service or internet connectivity. And because of that, your endpoint security really is not effective. Um, and so the only protection is what someone has running on their device and anti-virus and anti-malware can be somewhat effective um, in preventing some of this. But at the end of the day, it takes a lot of basically uh, education for the end consumer to be aware of these threats and to try avoid any type of action that would make them vulnerable to these type of attacks. Thanks for watching. And as always, please like, subscribe and provide comments and turn on notifications by clicking the bell in order to check out future videos published twice a week.